And over the weekend, former President Trump rolling into fight night in Miami. I can't think of a sporting event that Joe Biden could make an appearance at and receive standing ovations, besides a WNBA game. The UFC fan base isn't partisan. They're just red-blooded American men and their girlfriends. They're there to see knockouts. Trump walked in like he was the main event. Celebrities shaking hands, taking selfies. We see some familiar faces there, friends of the show, and some athletes. Bengals QB Joe Burrow and San Francisco's defensive end Nick Boza hanging out with the president pre-fight. After Dustin Poirier knocked out his opponent, he waltzed over and talked to Trump and Ivanka. Watch out, Jared. It was pay-per-view, millions watching at home and in bars across the country. UFC fans at UFC 299 love Donald Trump and NFL players do too. Trump entered the arena in Miami where UFC 299 was being held to a boisterous ovation alongside UFC president Dana White. MMA is a true alpha male and alpha female sport. You're not likely to find many purple haired soy boys in the audience watching an MMA event. You're even less likely to see a purple haired soy boy competing in an MMA event. MMA UFC is a top of the food chain sport, which makes it the perfect place for Donald Trump and his fans. UFC 299 was an amazing event here in Miami, and it was a huge financial success. We're here in Miami. The gate was 14.14 million. It is it was a sellout, 19,165 people. The highest grossing event ever at the arena. We broke our own record and it is the fourth highest grossing UFC event of all time. Miami is on fire. This place is unbelievable. Uh, what they've done in the state and in the city in the last uh, 10 years is phenomenal. You know what's crazy is that, let me, let me just put it to you this way. Probably the biggest venue you can do in the United States is Madison Square Garden, right? Miami is equal to Madison Square Garden now with numbers. Think, wrap your head around that and think about that 10 years ago. Would have never imagined it. Kudos to Dana White. He has really, really made this league, made this sport what it is. Former president and hopefully future president Donald Trump was seated right in front of the octagon with his daughter Ivanka. But before he was seated, he made a grand entrance in his usual fashion alongside Dana White and he greeted adoring celebrities and high profile athletes. A couple of them were NFL stars. He also shook hands with Barstool Sports founder, El Presidente, Dave Portnoy, and he also greeted Sage Steele. And guess who else he greeted? Michael Irvin, Hall of Famer, former Dallas Cowboy. It was amazing. And I don't know if you know this, but Michael Irvin is black. Oh my God, a black man giving Donald Trump props? You know heads exploded, but that wasn't the big explosion. The big explosion happened when people saw Donald Trump get together with Nick Bosa of the San Francisco 49ers and Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals. That drove the Libnuts crazy. This kind of stuff isn't supposed to happen. In addition to that, he stopped and posed with David Njoku from the Cleveland Browns. Yet another black high profile NFL athlete. But you know that David Njoku, Nick Bosa, and Joe Burrow will soon be dragged by the ESPN types. Do you remember how they treated Sage Steele? She basically got shown the door at ESPN because she was a conservative and a Donald Trump supporter and she wouldn't go along with their woke bullshit. Take a listen to what Sage Steele had to say about attending UFC 299. Former ESPN host Sage Steele joins me now. Sage, you were there at that Miami fight. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, well, I have to say it's embarrassing that that was my first UFC event, Jesse, because I was always in studio. Absolutely incredible. I had heard what it was like in the prior two times recently that Trump came to a pay-per-view UFC event at Madison Square Garden, for instance, and how crazed everybody was. In Madison Square Garden, New York, the bluest of blue states. He, people went nuts over Trump being at the UFC event. It was so intense. You couldn't hear yourself think when he was introduced and of course the procession over. Um, really incredible. And I think almost refreshing, rejuvenating to see 
20,000 people on their feet for this man. Um, really, really special. And by the way, he isn't just making appearances. He has been alongside Dana White, the, the CEO, the founder of UFC, really from day one. He is so supportive of the sport, supportive of the athletes, and I witnessed the athletes talking to him, you know, in between rounds. They love him too. And to me, it was beautiful to sit back and just watch all that happening, as well as the other athletes, the NFL players that you showed. Imagine these people felt comfortable in this environment, not in an NFL game, not in an NBA game. They felt comfortable at a UFC event to show you what they really feel. Coming up to him and nervously asking him to take a picture. It was, <laughs> it was an, a fascinating scene to watch. They were nervous. <laughs> They're not nervous when 300 yeah. pound linebackers I, I are coming I was helping them take pictures. That was awesome what Sage Steele said and she was so right. Do you remember? back when Tom Brady, when they went batshit crazy because Tom Brady had a red hat in his locker. They, they go nuts and, and at least people can go to UFC and feel completely comfortable. But you know, there's no way they're gonna allow Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow to get away with this. They must immediately be sent to some sort of NFL re-education camp in Ukraine. And as you might imagine, the nuts on the left went bonkers on Twitter. Let's check out a few of these tweets. I tweeted this out myself because as soon as I saw that interaction between Nick Bosa, Joe Burrow, and Donald Trump, I knew what was gonna come. I tweeted out, this will be forever known as the moment that Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow became racist. Not before then, this was the moment. Watch how they get treated by the sports journals now. It's gonna be sick, but I was wrong. <laughs> these people already thought that Nick Bosa was a racist. Look at some of these nutty tweets. This woman here who doesn't have the best grammar in the world. We've been known Nick Bosa was MAGA and racist. But Joe Burrow, who was irate when Roe v. Wade was overturned, is a shocker. If he supports Trump, he does look a tad uncomfortable. He has 24 hours to respond. Oh, so Joe Burrow has to respond to Miss Grammar here and tell her how he is going to be, you know, a upstanding individual and look away from Trump. That's how these people really think. You got 24 hours to respond. Well, it's been 24 hours. I don't think that uh, Miss Madam Auntie got her response. So what? What's now? What now? This guy calls himself Scary Larry. Scary Larry said, we already knew Nick Bosa was a MAGA POS. Okay, I guess he knew, I didn't know that. Uh, and now we know Joe Burrow is too. Trump will never be president again, guy has his crystal ball, and wouldn't have been in the first place without Russian interference. So you can already see what this guy's all about. If, and if you didn't, you could look in his bio, you see the Ukraine flag, so you get where he's coming from. And neither Bosa no, nor Burrow will ever win a Super Bowl. Losers back losers. Oh, cry some more. You, you upset, dude? You mad, bro? <sighs> Man, these people are crazy. Let's see what else we got here. This is from Smitty. Smitty says, damn, Joe Burrow, got to hope you fail now. Simply for showing up and taking a picture and interacting with Donald Trump is enough to hope you fail in life at this point. I don't know whether Joe Burrow supports Donald Trump or not. I don't know if he was just being cordial, but you're telling me you can't even be cordial with Donald Trump? There's something wrong with you if you feel that way. And then we got Joey here with the rainbow up in his bio, and you could tell how he thinks. Hey Google, how do you turn a hot guy like Nick Bosa into the least attractive cuck in the world? Introduce him to Donald Trump. Hey dude, I don't care what you are, he's not gonna date you. Get, get over it. But I think you're gonna begin seeing the tide is starting to turn. People are realizing, eh, things weren't as bad before as they are right now. And I saw a bunch of people on Twitter beginning to make that turn and no longer feel, you know, compelled to keep quiet because of what may happen. Check these tweets out. This is from somebody who says they are gays for Trump. Imagine that. It's bad enough that black people are for Trump. Now you got a whole legion of people that gays for Trump. This election is too important for anyone to keep quiet completely agree. That is why I give much respect to Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow, two current NFL players, for not being afraid to publicly show their support by meeting Donald Trump at UFC 299. Welcome to Team MAGA, boys. Welcome.
Absolutely welcome. Salute. This one from a big account. I mean, therefore I am. President Trump took a pick with Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow at UFC. Let the meltdown begin. And, and it did. This one from Tweet of the Day. Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow supporting Trump. People want them suspended from the NFL. Yes, there was a campaign afoot to have them suspended from the NFL solely because they decided to greet, meet, shake hands with and have a conversation with Donald Trump. That tells you the standard, how nuts some of these people are. Do you see people demanding Joe Biden supporters to be suspended or fired? No, because you never see him. He's not going to show up at UFC, doesn't go to any football games, wouldn't even do an interview during the Super Bowl halftime. <sighs> nuts and here is uh dominique claire says y'all are weirdos for losing respect for joe burrow for talking to trump i honestly don't think his political views align with trump so i gained respect for him for acting like a normal civilized adult in the situation rare these days it is extremely rare for people to have civility it is so rare it surprises you when you see people actually be civil like i said i don't know what joe burrow's political affiliation is i really don't care none of my business but what i did like is that the fact that this guy a prominent nfl player decided to speak with and greet donald trump and didn't feel compelled to run away with his hair on fire and as one of those guys said a shift certainly appears to be underway jason whitlock underscored that theme in one of his recent videos let's take a look donald trump Oh, yeah. Did another big interest at the UFC fight, and then he's pictured talking, engaging with oh. Cincinnati quarterback Joe Burrow, 49ers pass rusher Nick Bosa. Mm -hmm. They're pictured after the event together, smiling. And the thing that's interesting to me is there hasn't been incredible blowback yes. against Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. uh, True. As of yet. And, you know, Nick Bosa has always, from the beginning of his NFL career, <laughs> taken a little blowback for being a Trump supporter. But, but it, it almost feels like the tide has significantly mm. changed and that there's a lot less blowback for these athletes for uh, not pretending that uh, Donald Trump is herpes and if you shake his hand, <laughs> uh, you'll be just yeah. like Usher Raymond. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't break yeah, out with cold, cold sores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have things changed? Can can athletes now be Trump supporters? I think people realize at this point that yes, they can. Nobody should be telling you who you shouldn't talk to, should or should not talk to, if you, as a grown ass man or woman, feel like it. A little bit, but hold on. I wanted to see, see, it would have been a bigger deal if it would have been like T. Higgins or Jamar Chase. See, I, I think there's almost an acceptance that if white athletes do it, there's like, okay, he's a white guy, I get it. But listen, the way this country is, but he didn't see, he, he obviously didn't see David Njoku from the Cleveland Browns or Michael Irvin in terms of their greetings with Donald Trump. So it's white and black at this point. And as you saw in one of those tweets, it's also the gays. In the state that it's in, uh, there's, an, there's at least a little bit of a capitulation in saying, you know what? Maybe things were not as disastrous with Donald J. Trump as we tried to tell you and look where we are now look where we are now that is the defining statement where were you four years ago and where are you right now that's all you should be looking at all of the propaganda that's being spewed out there i think people are waking up and going hey man my wife could actually go to the store without getting robbed i wasn't paying four dollars a gallon for gas I wasn't going to the grocery store and buying one bag of groceries for a hundred bucks. I think, I think that stretches across all demographics. People are feeling it. They don't like it. And then of course, the last straw was Joe Biden <laughs> apologizing to an illegal immigrant and didn't want to disrespect a murderer. Are you serious? Are, are you absolutely serious? And you expect people like me and others to be offended by Donald Trump? You're absolutely insane. Could it be 
that people are no longer afraid to say how they truly feel. Perhaps people don't care about the nasty comments on a YouTube video or on your Twitter feed and really have no regard for the insults from people who are anonymous and don't even know them. Saving this country, restoring America is bigger than any single person right now. It's going to take a groundswell. It's going to take a movement to turn things around. I don't want the United States to turn into Haiti. I don't want to see America turned into a third world country. Now I understand this might turn some of you guys off, but it's your prerogative not to watch. I am not gonna bow down anymore. I'm gonna make it known how I feel about Donald Trump and about America. I feel it's time for Americans to stand up and proudly and angrily say, we're pissed and we're mad as hell and we're not gonna take it anymore. This is a sports channel, but I'm gonna feature a lot of sporting events that the mainstream media and ESPN aren't gonna talk about. So let me know what you think. If you agree with my position on these things, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I'm bound to lose some subscribers because of how I feel about Donald Trump and the restoration of America. And go ahead and tell some of your friends about me. The bigger this channel gets, the more I'll talk about it. Let me know what you think in the comments, good or bad. I'd love to hear what you have to say about UFC 299 and Donald Trump's appearance and Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow. Talk to you soon.